Oh. All right, we look are going. Oh, look who just jumped in John's lap. She All said, right, so she heard she heard the camera was going to start rolling. The camera is rolling, so let's set the tone here. Uh, it's Jim Nelson here from my dining room. A little bit of my living room in the background there as uh, we're doing this thing for 88.5 FM. It's called Here at Home. And I'm joined by a gentleman who I have known for a very long time. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But one of the uh, kindest, cheerfulest, friendliest people that I've ever had the good fortune of working with and knowing. Please say hello to my friend John Easdale of Dramarama. Hi, Jim. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, John. I'm good. You and I have known each other a long time. I was thinking, I think I met your daughters when at least some of them were still in elementary school. Oh, yeah. No, we've, yeah. we've known each other since the 90s. So it's so. Uh, I'm wondering we're, if my daughter. Up, we're, we're coming up on the 25 year mark, I think. That's what I'm thinking, somewhere around there. In fact, we don't just know each other, but John and I worked together, directly together, on the same team for roughly 10 years between two different jobs. So. Yeah, we've known each other quite well for many years, and it's really nice to see your smiling face again. Been a while since I've actually seen you in person. No, that's true, because our, our, the job we shared went away. We, we moved on. I actually went back to singing in a rock and roll band, which I, which I had given up for, for a number of years to, to right. get a, a real job, what we call a real job. Yeah, and we worked together at a a magazine, a music industry magazine, and uh, John and I were part of the editorial team. We were the copy editors and proofreaders and writers, and and uh, boy, I had a, a great time uh, working with you there at, at the Album Network magazine, so much so that when I started my own company afterwards, I hired you to do some more writing for us, so. And thank you for that, because that was, uh, at that time, pretty much, much needed income. Uh, I had I was unemployable at, at that point, and uh, and luckily you employed me. So thank oh, you, thank good. you again for that. Well, you're very welcome. And uh, it's uh, it's it's been a while since we've seen each other in person, but we chat on the phone and text and email from time to time. And I've had the pleasure of playing some of your uh, drama rama songs on the air on eighty eight five FM over the years, which is good. So. Uh, we know that the band is back together, but I want to sort of <laughs> go way backwards for a moment. Um, the first time uh, that I became aware of the fact that you were the writer and the singer of this massive hit song from oh, a couple of years ago, uh, I knew I knew who you were when we worked together at the Album Network. I knew that you were you were the singer from Drama Rama, but because of my personal music tastes in the 80s, I was listening to radio stations that weren't playing Drama Rama. So I kind of vaguely was aware, but I didn't really know. And then I, for years, I was hearing about how this one song by Drama Rama was like the most popular song in the history of like planet Earth. <laughs> according to at least one format of radio, it was always their number one song. And I never put it all together and went, oh, and one day I'm getting ready for work. I remember telling you this at the time. I was getting ready for work and listening to the radio. And I start singing along with this song. I'll give you anything, diamond rings. And, you know, you know the lyrics way better than I do. And I'm listening to it and singing along to it and going, wait, is that John? Is that John? That sounds like it might be John Eastdale's voice on that song. <laughs> And uh, so Color Me, like, finally informed. I finally joined the rest of the planet already in progress on that one. But that song, Anything, Anything, was, uh, was a huge thing for Drama Rama. I want to say it was about 1985. So we're talking 35 years ago. But it's tell me, what's your relationship with that song today? Because I imagine you still have one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, we... We uh we get to play it, you know. We, we, we I still love to sing it, and um, in some cases, we we've been asked to play at these uh, what do they call '80s shows, uh -huh. and they invite us to play. I, I call them oldies shows. Uh, didn't never plan to be be nostalgia, but 
but yeah, we, we get to go and, and, and sing it there. And uh, it's interesting that like you say 35 years, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm barely out of my thirties just in general. So I, I, I must've started really young. <laughs> you were two but, when you wrote it and sang it, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it, it's interesting. And, and it's interesting that, that people still like to hear it and that, that people like to hear us play it and, and that we get to sing it. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it was what started everything for us in terms of going from being a, a band that played in the garage and, and played in very small nightclubs in New Jersey to moving to California and, and, and being on the radio and, uh, and becoming an actual quote unquote professional band. Right. Do you, I mean, that was your debut album, I believe, right? That was your first yes, album sir. on that on? So at that point, you must have thought, oh, my gosh, the world is ours. Uh, I'll have all the oysters, please. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. And uh, so I'm wondering, you know, as you look back on it from this perspective now, uh, do you have any thoughts about how that song may have or may have not been a catalyst beyond that one moment? Did it have anything for you uh, in terms of your career and your history? Any thoughts on that? Well, I, I think at the time when we put it out, when we, we put it out on a French label and a DJ in Los Angeles, his name's Rodney Bingenheimer, started playing it on his uh, Saturday and Sunday night show. Right. And it, it, I guess they say the phones lit up. So it's, it got added to, to the station and, and they started playing it all the time. And then we found out about it in New Jersey. And we're like, oh, maybe we'll come out for for you know a weekend or, or a week or so and, and try to play a couple of shows and yeah it was a catalyst for our whole career we we, we ended up turning a vacation into uh, a life change we, we we moved out here and uh we started playing concerts and arenas and and, and amphitheaters and and selling records and being on the radio and 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 as you say if your first one goes like that you think everyone is going to go like that at least at the beginning and it was eye-opening to say the least to find out that not every song i wrote had that same uh effect on people <laughs> right um but you know uh, you know time teaches you a lot of lessons and even when the band had made four or five albums. We were still plugging away and, and, and hoping to, to, to do it. And, and we, we got more songs on the radio and we got more songs on MTV and, and we were, we were doing all right, but we kind of called a halt to the proceedings in 1994. And in 1996, I started working with you at the album network. Mm -hmm. uh, and I learned just exactly what, the music business was about and uh as i often say i i didn't uh I, I didn't so much learn a lot as have a lot of my suspicions confirmed but but i did realize that that so many records come out and and so few get on the radio and so few sell any number of records you know as 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 our uh old boss used to say this is a failure based business you know at least back mm -hmm. then you know, a hundred records would come out and maybe one or two of them would end up on the radio and would end up being, you know, someone that you heard of. So, so you had that perspective. You must have had even uh, more of a, of a reality based recognition of how awesome and how unusual that was that ride that you got to go on because of anything, anything. Yeah. Well, we were shocked because we we weren't making records that sounded like anything we were hearing on the radio at least out out in new york area there was no quote unquote modern rock radio station except for college stations mm -hmm. and uh we we made a record just for our own sakes you know we we spent our money from our day jobs and went in the studio and, and made a record that we liked and never expected it to go any further than our friends and family and and maybe a couple of hopefully you know uh you know, very discerning listeners. But uh, we were shocked when there was a radio station in Los Angeles that played the kind of music that we made. And uh, yeah, it, it was very surprising and eye-opening and, and, and 
and shocking and, and, and unbelievable to us. Yeah, I just played it on the radio at 88.5 FM just a few nights ago, actually. And that's but, even even more shocking and unbelievable. Mind-blowing, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You, you know, I, I want to... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, you, you don't realize just how lucky you are. And, and you know, it's, it's easier to win the lottery, I often say. <laughs> Well, I want to switch gears here slightly because you mentioned New Jersey, and I'm curious. Um, you're from Wayne, New Jersey, specifically. That's where you're from. Uh -huh. and there's a band called Fountains of Wayne that aren't actually from Wayne, New Jersey, but uh, their leader, Adam Schlesinger, uh, if I pronounce that correctly, um, recently passed away from COVID-19. I know. Uh, it was. Uh... Yeah. Did you have any no relationship with them or with Adam at all? Did you know him? Played a couple of shows with them. And I, th I think I met him uh, back when, in the day when we were uh, working together. Uh, nice guy, really nice guy for as little amount of time as I spent with him. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a terrible shame, you know, because aside from that, he also did you know, that thing you do, he wrote that right. song and he wrote a lot of songs for television and movies and TV. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, no, that's a, it's a terrible shame for a life to be cut short yeah. that soon, you know, and, and especially for something as, as horrible as the coronavirus is. Yeah. What we're all going through. I'm in my dining room right now. How are you doing with your lockdowns shelter in place? stuff you oh. got your whole family there what's the yeah no we're all we're all uh we're all doing really well i'm in my living room um i'm with my cat iris who keeps <laughs> jumping up on my lap she knows she likes to be on television uh, <laughs> or, or, or radio or whatever hybrid this is <laughs> whatever it is um, we're doing yeah no we're doing really well uh yeah everybody's good we're, we're we, we like each other so we do well in in, in close quarters and yeah, we, we, I mean, we are blessed in, in, in a lot of ways in, in, in the fact that we do like each other. And, and, and so it, it's not as much of a hardship for us as I think it is for some people who are really going to have the cabin fever. Right, right. Claudia and I got out for a walk this morning. We try to walk several days a week as best we can. And of course, when, uh, when I moved in with her almost a year ago, I inherited a step cockatiel. And she, she, she makes herself known during my radio show from time to time. So in fact, I'm staring at her just across the way there. So she's, she makes more noise sometimes than your cat does. But uh, um, so looking at what's going on with uh, Drama Rama right now, first of all, uh, a couple of things, two of the guys in the band, uh, we also worked with at the Album Network. And one of them, Mike, your bass player, is somebody that we, you met because you worked at the album network because Mike Davis and I, we worked together there the entire 11 years that I was there, but I'm pretty sure that's where you met him, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And he, I think he'd pretty much uh, stopped playing guitar. He, he, he had, uh, he, he kind of retired from the music business because he was in a band called Lizzie Borden, like a heavy yep. metal band in the eighties. And he had, you know, kind of, you know, put down his ax, so to speak, and, and, and was ready to just call it a day. And then I, I said, why don't you play, play with me? I, at the time I was doing a quote unquote, I was a solo artist. Right. So, uh, I asked Mike to join us and he joined us right around the time, uh, around the time when, uh, lady Di uh, passed away. So that's however many years of that ago that was that he's been, he's, he's the newest guy in the band. Right. He's been with us like 20, 20 years or some odd right. years. Yeah. Right. And also one of the uh, absolute all time nicest guys I've ever met. And like I said, I've, I've known him now since probably around 1992. What a great guy. And then also Mark Englert, who uh, I guess is what an original member of drama Rama. And he worked with us at the album network as well, but I, we were in different departments. I didn't know him quite as well. Yeah, well, Mark, I've known since we were toddlers, since before kindergarten. We we lived on the same street in, in New Jersey. No kidding. And, uh, so I've known him fifty some odd years, and uh, I remember when he learned how to play guitar, and uh, and we started playing together 
soon after that. So we graduated high school together. In fact, uh, the other guitar player, Peter Wood, uh, who was also an original member and is still in the band, the three of us graduated high school together. In Wayne, New Jersey. Yeah. From whence yes. the band name Fountains of Wayne came from. There are actual fountains there in Wayne, New Jersey. Is that right? Fountains of Wayne was a store or a, not even a store. It, it was like a, a great big uh, acreage where you could buy fountains and statuary uh -huh. for, for your backyard and, right. or your front yard. If, if you uh, choose, right? But yeah, it was a huge place on, on the highway. And uh, I guess that's where they got the name. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's the last uh, connection to Fountains of Wayne that I'll make in this conversation about Drama Rama. This is John Easdale, by the way, with me, if you uh, hadn't heard. I guess you can't just check into these things like you can a TV program. So I guess you, anyone listening still has been listening to the since the beginning. Uh, John, you have a brand new song out, Drama Rama does. And uh -huh. May I say, sir, it, it kicks ass. It is so good. And uh, I'm wondering if we can talk about that for a second. It's called Up to Here. And uh, it's like a good old-fashioned social commentary type of a tune. When did you write yeah. that? I actually wrote it several years ago before our, our, our current situation, although it sounds like it could have been written yesterday. Uh, I was just uh, thinking about all the different things that, uh, you know, the, the, the Gulf, you know, the, the tribal situation, you know, and uh, just the way the, the way the world is and the way things look from my perspective. And um, yeah, I, 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 I think you were the guy who told me that uh, talking about, music is like whistling about baseball and, uh, <laughs> or, or dancing about architecture. Yeah. It's a Pete Townsend quote, actually. Yeah. It's, 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 I get tongue tied when I start talking, especially about my music. I could probably talk about the Beatles or the Stones or the Kinks or David Bowie all day long. But when you, when, when it comes down to talking about my motivation and, and stuff, I, I, I get a little tongue tied. Well, there's some great lines in the song, and I'm going to quote a couple of them because they deserve to be heard. One of them is, bury me, but not too deep in case they find a cure, which is just so ironic and interesting and obviously feels like it might have been written last week. And then also a line that repeats a couple of times uh, where you you sort of take in, you know, the the what's the word I'm looking for? The icons of, of the genre, the Ramones, and you're taking them to task a little bit for selling soda pop and beer, um, which is interesting. Not the Ramones themselves, although they did actually sell their songs to beer company while they were still working and, and alive. But it was more about the fact that I heard... Uh, Blitzkrieg bop on a Diet Pepsi commercial after Joey died. And it was like, you know, come on, let's, let's have some respect for the dead, you know? Uh, and, it, yeah. it, it, and, it, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, although I, I understand more and more how, you know, advertising and music have come together. And, and quite frankly, I, I wouldn't say no to a, to a check from, a, you know, for, for a big, a big, big dollar check from someone, you know, probably, but at the same time, I, it would depend what the what the product was and and everything, but yeah, it, it was it was it, it was a certain commercial in particular that uh, had the Ramones in it, and it was after Joey died, and I was like, come on, Just so didn't that's, feel that's right what out. that line's about. Gotcha. Well, the whole song up to here is what it's called. It's new from Drama Rama, and um, one line after the other. Clearly, you did some fine lyric writing here. Did that? come quickly for you or is that something that you worked on for a while a lot of my words come pretty pretty easily when it when it comes time to actually write them all down i, I think i have you know it, it does a lot of uh gestation in my brain but when i finally pick up the pencil it just kind of pours out 
Yeah, I wonder, you know, we spent all those years at the magazine together and you honed your magazine writing skills, if that's the way to put it, during those years. And I know because I've edited a lot of things you've written um, <laughs> and you're a fine writer in that style as well. Do you find that, that, that your songwriting, your lyric writing was affected in any way by learning how to write other ways? To be honest with you, I, I think working there and doing that kind of made me realize you know just how many songs there are and how many bands there are and I, I think it, it, it's caused me to to think a lot more about what I'm writing and what I'm saying Interesting. Uh, yeah I, I, I think I used to just kind of blurt everything out you know and, and let it all hang out and, and I think I'm a lot more selective now and uh, I wouldn't say it's dried up but but I just I, I take a little bit more time and 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 care and and a lot more thought goes into it before mm -hmm. i'm willing to to share it. that i think that's that's one of the reasons why it's taken so long for for this record to come out and and why i don't write as many songs as i used to or at least not that i'd be willing to share with anybody <laughs> right yeah you remember those days probably you'd walk in my office and the pile of pile of cds that had come in in the mail was just enormous i was think you know i was getting I think maybe about a hundred CDs a week, give or take, trying to, you know, listen to as many of them as I can. And then we were writing about so many of them, but yeah, that was a, that was a time when we were overwhelmed and I can, I can see where you might go, Ooh, boy, a lot of people are doing this. Maybe I might want to take a <laughs> moment and, 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 and pay more attention to how I'm doing it than, uh, than just slapping it out. Yeah. I think as time's gone by, I, I have a much greater appreciation for how lucky we are and, and, and how fortunate we are. And, and, you know, just, you know, the importance of, of, of the qual of doing something that I can be proud of and that doesn't insult the listener's intelligence, you know, uh, you only have so much time on this earth and you, you only have, you know, so many minutes and you're, if you got to do something, you know, you got to do something worthwhile and, and and I have a much greater appreciation for the listener and for the audience than I used to too. I think I was a lot more selfish back in the day than I am now. Mm, well, you said it a little earlier, time teaches us lessons, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Gives us a chance to rethink a lot of things. Hey, listen, um, I'm looking at my clock down here. I'm trying to surreptitiously look down at the timer and we've been going for quite a while here. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up a little bit, but tell me about Drama Rama today. You've got a five piece band. We mentioned Mike Davis, the bass player is the newest guy and he's been in for 20 years. So I guess the whole lineup is guys have been together for a long time, huh? And they're still, uh -huh. you guys are all playing together still. Yeah, well, like I said, the Peter, Mark, and I uh, all graduated together, and Tony and Mike joined us in the 90s uh, when I was a solo artist, mm -hmm. and uh, we got back together in 2003 as Drama Rama, and ever since we've been playing and, 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 and having fun, and now we have a new album out. It's called Color TV. It's coming out may 1st i don't know if this will air before or after but i believe it'll be up by may 1st yeah pretty soon yeah and uh the new way of listening to music is streaming i guess and and mm -hmm. that's different than when i was growing up uh, it was about records and then cassettes and then cds and and all those things are now old-fashioned right you know? right but i remember I remember when we got our first color TV and it was a big deal. And uh, I remember when we got our first VHS recorder and that was a big deal. And I remember right. getting my first CD player and I remember getting my first DVD player and, and all the different things. I remember getting my first cell phone, you know, and, and, Do you and all of those things. It's very quaint to think about because th those things are all, you know, relics. They're all antiques now. Do you remember getting your first Spotify account? <laughs> still, I, 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 I hate to say it, but I don't have one. I, I still oh, don't, don't have, even one. have one. Huh? I, my, my children do, but, but I haven't, I haven't caught on to the streaming thing. I, I've downloaded a uh, very few songs and, and now downloading is old fashioned, right? It, oh yeah. So uh, I'm still, you know, put the record on, you know, right. Uh, kind of guy. I, even, even on our new album, I, I think of it as 
two sides, you know, side one ends and side two begins, even though there's no sides anymore. Right. Uh, uh, but, you know, that's just the way it is. So, yeah, May 1st, Color TV is available for streaming and there's supposed to be some physical product, although because of the virus, uh, the factories are shut down. So I don't know when, in fact, that'll happen. But we're looking forward to that in the summer, hopefully. Right on. And I, I, uh, I can't wait to hear the rest of it because if uh, up to here is any indication, there's going to be some fine stuff on there. Uh, I played a song of yours that you put out a couple of years ago, Swamp Song. Uh huh. Is that on the uh, new album? It is. It All is. Right. So I know a couple of songs. One of our listeners, when I played that uh, the first time on 88.5 FM, one of our listeners reached out to me and said that that song, Swamp Song, from Drama Rama was her new favorite song after hearing it one time on the radio. So now more people get a chance to hear it out there on the streaming services as well as uh, on the radio. Good stuff. Let's hope so. Actually, we re we re-recorded it for the album. So that's, I guess, what you'd call the single version. And then there's the album version, kind of like uh, Revolution, the single, and, and Revolution on on the album. They're a little bit different. Mm. well and good so, so yeah, i played the original so that makes me a uh, player of the original there you go that's sure. that's what that makes me well thank you for doing that jim thank you for playing us on the radio and and thanks for having us on i i can't thank you enough well uh, absolutely and when this thing is all over i hope that you guys will play some shows to play the new uh, music hopefully we'll be able to see you doing that uh in the extreme near future that is the nice. plan. I, I, it remains to be seen how soon people are going to want to get back into the water. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it, it, it's going to be a, an interesting thing to see how, how fast people are willing to get back in, in, in the bleachers. Well, that, yeah, that's a good point. I, I think probably the first thing we should do when, when we're all comfortable with no longer social distancing is you and I got to show up at a diner in Burbank for some breakfast in the middle of the afternoon, don't we? Absolutely. Well, I know you're a baseball fan, so yeah. I, I understand that, that you can, you know, there is no baseball. What, what's yeah. going on? I don't know. I don't know. I see, <laughs> I see stories. They're talking about this. They're maybe going to do that. They're thinking about this. And I've sort of let go of the whole idea because whatever they're talking about now doesn't, I mean, they're talking about, playing all the games in Arizona without any fans in the stands. I, I have a hard time believing that'll actually come to fruition. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. That's, that's a lot different mm -hmm. than what we're used to, isn't it? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, listen, Hey, it's been so fun catching up with you, sir. Nice to see your smiling face again after some time where we haven't actually seen each other in person, but it's always great to catch up with you. And so thrilled to hear that drama Rama has got this new music coming out and, uh, up to here is just fantastic. So thanks for getting together and doing all that again. Pleasure is mine, Jim. Thank you again for having us on. And thanks to everybody over there at KCSN for, for playing such good music all the time. Right on, man. You be well and uh, tell your wife I said hi. I've not talked to her in a long time, but tell her I said hello. And uh, I'll check in with you soon. I look forward to it.